The biggest difference in that is you are the employee within the store. You are the owner operator mm. as well. And you are able to put yourself in front of the camera. That is one of the big pillars that I tell every brand that wants me to work with them. Have a mascot, have an ambassador. If you can have that person who's already deep inside the business itself, you are shortcutting like massive, massive shortcuts because you already know the ins and outs of the business. You don't have to email someone. Is this right? Is this right? You already know. You put yourself in front of the camera. I'm not asking you to go research something. You already know it off the top of your head. It makes it so much easier. We don't have to create a script to tell an ambassador or an influencer to tell them what you already know. You could have done it yourself. Welcome to the Sevo Show. We have a guest in Matthew Pham, P H A M. Uh, he's part of the Fam Group, or he is a large part of the Fam Group. He is Fam. Uh, he started off uh, with his father with uh, one uh, grocery store, and now there are multiple, and they're uh, labelled as IGAs. Uh, back in the days of uh, the Dusons and the supermarkets, they were all uh, kind of local names. IGA took over. But the quality, the, the um, relationships and the, the customer service is still top quality. And um, I met Matt uh, from, uh, through social media. He came out to seek my help on, uh, for the TikTok stuff. And uh, he's seen some success, but uh, it's not about me. It's about Matt. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Seven. Spot on with the description about, you know, <laughs> the evolution from Deucens and Foodland into what is known as IJ now. Yeah. So back then with your, with your dad um, uh, starting out, what was that like? Did he, did he build it from the ground up or did he uh, buy it? Yeah. So funny story. So he bought – a Foodland store in 1990. It was his corner store in Bayswater. And my parents came from Vietnam after the Vietnam War in 1986. And he was studying a business diploma. And one day he went to his local corner store, it was up for sale and end of the day he decided to buy it, which is pretty crazy. And um, look, had no idea how to run a supermarket or anything. Decided to give it a go. Interest rates were pretty high, about 17% at the time. And you know, he got loans from all his um, family members and whatnot to give it a crack. And, you know, it's funny hear him tell me all his stories growing up about how running a business and not knowing what he was doing. He was saying, like, I had no idea what I was doing. I thought Cordial was in the orange juice section, in the, in the chiller section. Uh, and it was through his hard work and dedication that um, expanded to where we are today. So, you know, he started the business before I was born and um, kind of grew into the business and never thought I'd be part of the whole journey and work full-time in the business but um couldn't ask for anything else and um pretty much a dream job for me amazing and to keep it in the family for him must have been a proud moment for him yeah so growing up i mean <laughs> growing up as as a teenager i i didn't you know plan to be part of the business or work in supermarkets i kind of loathed it growing up and getting dragged to work but uh, that work experience was really good and you know and shaped who i was uh, in my early 20s to where i am now and yeah, look, he was always, you know, big on me pursuing my own, you know, passions in life. And I was just very fortunate after graduating at university, to get some work experience and one opportunity led to another. And um, now I'm knee deep in the business. So what did you study at uni? So I studied a double degree in commerce ec economics and I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And I did some extra studying. So I did an honors in economics for an extra year. So I studied for five and a half years and Still after that, I still had, had no idea what I wanted to do. So what, what made you want to go, right, I'm going to study this, not knowing there was a job at the end of it or what job you could get at the end of it? Yeah, so in high school, I was not sure what I wanted to do. You know, I did a lot of the subjects for engineering because a lot of my friends were going down the engineering path. And then, you know, after, you know, my T and my ATAR results, I was like, well, Engineering is probably not the path I'm really passionate about. Science is, you know, I was okay at it, but I didn't think I was passionate about it. And I was quite good at economics. I liked the idea of how things worked um, in society with money and whatnot and finances. And, you know, I took inspiration from my dad being a business person and entrepreneur. I was like, well, oh, you know, I was doing commerce. Oh, economics, there's a degree for that. So, yeah, went down the economics path and commerce path. But, um, yeah, I didn't think 
really professionally what I wanted to do. I just like the idea of it, but not sure what I want to do as a full-time profession. So if you had your time again at the start of that commerce uh, economics degree, would you have studied it still? Geez, very good question. I think so. I think university was valuable in, in the in skills that it taught me about, you know, being disciplined in, you know, doing your studies, learning concepts, applying it in, a, in an assessment and whatnot. But if I had my time back, I'd probably, you know, do a few, few things more differently. Uh, I was one of those uni, university students, very typical, that, you know, you rock up, you know, twice a week to uni, do the bare minimum, uh, cram for exams and assignments. And I think if I had my time back, you know, I'd, I'd enjoy that life being a uni student, you know, going to all the guilds and all the socials and uh, making more friends and enjoying it all because, you know, you're, you're expected to be a full-time uni student as I was and I probably didn't maximize that whole experience. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I'm the same. Yeah. A lot of us, I reckon. First, first year I, I think I got a 50% in my first unit and I was like, oh dear, I, I really should redo this, uh, this unit, but I passed, so I didn't need to, but I'm like, man, if I failed, that would have been like a thousand dollars or $1,500. I think it cost per unit back then. Um, so you graduated and yeah, I mean, we could always do things differently or, or more optimally mm. um, rather than stuff around in our 20s. But that's when we learn, right? 100%. So when, when you did graduate, uh, at what point did you go, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join the family business officially? Yeah, it was a bit of a happy accident with all these opportunities that, that opened for me. So in 2015, mid-2015, I graduated. I was not doing much at home. I was just applying for jobs and playing a lot of video games and mucking around. And my dad came and he's like, Matt, you're not really doing much. How about you just get some work experience, tag along with me. And, you know, if you find a job, so be it. So I was like, look, I can't say no to opportunities. So, and I was like, you know, back in my mind, I had the idea of, you know, pursuing a professional career yep. um, somewhere else. And, you know, growing up in the family business, I kind of knew how a supermarket work, all the basics I learned as a kid and teenager, you know, I could apply. And it was really weird. You know, I wasn't doing much for the first week or two, just hanging around. And one day uh, my dad, Vincent, he came to me. He's like, Matt, we've got a bit of a job for you. Uh, we've got some community chess money and this is our way uh, that we, um, when people support us, we have money to give back to local community. And he's like, well, Matt, uh, we've got some money that we need to donate to the community and organizations the next two months. Uh, would you like to take on the job? And uh, me back then, I was like, oh, look, how hard could that be? And, you know, I was much more shy and introverted back then and had some social anxiety, but I was like, look, I'm just going to Google local charities, sporting clubs, organizations in our four stores. And I just picked up the phone going, hi, my name is Matt. You know, I'm from the local IJ, blah, 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 blah. I'd like to give you money. And, you know, the excitement that people had on the phone going, really you want to give me money? Because no one's going to say no to yeah. money and donations. Of course. And, um, yeah, and then from there I met met with them face-to-face, -face, you know, presented the check with the novelty check and everything. And, you know, that really inspired a passion in me. It's like, wow, I could really see I was making a difference in the community and I was really to enjoy, um, you know, while I was doing the line of work I was involved with. And I built some self-esteem and confidence myself and you know that led one thing led to another and um you know the whole ij ethos of what we do you know serving the community and also giving back to the community you know that resonated with me and you know realizing how lucky i was with my parents being you know boat refugees who came to australia with nothing you know all those things in my you know early 20s started to click in and you know that's kind of what led me to being the family business and you know to this day my fa my, my favorite part of the job is being able to connect with you know, customers and giving back to the community. That's the most enjoyable part, you know, back then and it is now. Yeah, you get the opportunity to give back uh, from the start and you're kind of giving back through what your dad, through your dad's kind of uh, upbringing and, and what, or everything he's built, you're giving back on behalf of him as well as yourself. Yeah, for, for sure. Look, we... Look, growing up, you know, I, I used to hear all, a lot of his stories of how he came here on a boat, three months, almost died, yada, yada, came to Australia with, you know, clothes on his back, no word of English. And it was just through hard work that opportunities arose. And I think that's the values that it was instilled in me to just work hard and yeah. put your head down and see what happens. And we realized that we came from nothing and we're going to make sure we give opportunities 
to other people who had who have nothing, just like we we were, and we're, yeah. we're very blessed and fortunate in life, and we just want to pay for the opportunities and you know, all the goodwill that we've received over the years. So, so back when you were a teenager, um, growing up, and and obviously the family business was up and running already. Um, was it just the one store back then, or did you have multiple? Yeah, so we started with a, a store in Bayswater, a food land in Bayswater, and then he passed it on to his uh, sister. And he decided to take on an IJ store. It was called Rules or Super Valley back in the day in Huntingdale. And to give context, Huntingdale um, 25 years ago was just bush all around. There was no Canningvale or Southern River or whatever. And, um, yeah, that's that's where, it, you know, he expanded really. Um, yeah, we had one store for a while and probably in the last 10 or so years he's decided to expand the business so you know started at one and now we've got four so how many how many did were there uh at his uh in his during during his realm when you were a teenager what what, what age like uh let's go let's go like 15 yes yeah, so it was when i was 15 was still still one one still, one still still the one store and i was pretty much getting dragged to work up until i was yeah. 18 you know on the sunday doing the morning shift and i was stacking shelves and serving customers and I remember going, why am I doing this? I could be at home just playing video games or whatever, but I'm getting dragged to work. But um, yeah, the penny dropped in my early times. Like, wow, some of the, the skills and lessons I learned in those times. And I, what I thought he was being hard on me, you know, I was like, I'm very grateful that, you know, it led me to where I am today and all the skills I learned and the development. Love that. And um, did, did you get paid when you were a No, you get no. Um, you weren't paid. A, 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 a Asian parents, Asian family. Um, <laughs> no, and that's probably what, what caused a lot of my angst to, to to go to work, not getting paid. But, you know, I I think it was – it actually taught me the value of money actually, helped me to, you know, consider like, you know, this is what it looks like to, to work and this mm. is what you get in re- return and stuff. But, no, I didn't, <laughs> didn't really get paid. Yeah. Uh, so, often. so the reason why I'm asking all these questions is uh, constructing a uh, a difference in because I see a lot of ethnic differences in Australia. Mm. Like um, my Asian friends or my Indian friends um, who have family businesses or are part of family businesses, they all have the same exact story. <laughs> is that right? No, I'm not surprised. But they all work hard, and they they didn't get paid at the start, and now they're better business people. They're more educated. They're better with money, and they're better off, as opposed to the typical Aussie person, right? The white person who, you know, had it hand fed to them, or they were paid, or they got a chance to, you know, fluff around and do nothing. There's a huge difference there and that's something interesting that I'm observing. Obviously me coming from Russia, I have the same story. I didn't have a family business but mum kicked my ass. When I was a teenager, she's like, you go to work. You want to buy something, you go to work. I'm not buying you shit. And, you know, she still spoiled me and she helped me along the way and she didn't uh, allow me to fail colossally. Um, And, you know, I've gone through more colossal failures later in life but that's fine. Um, but yeah, she, she set that up for me and I'm so grateful for that. And I can see that in yourself with your family. Now, when you were with that one store uh, as a 15 year old and you were forced to work there for free, yes. what was that like with your friends at school? Did they go, Oh, let's go, let's go see, uh, Matt and at, at his dad's store. And let's, <laughs> did they fuck around or anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty funny. Cause you know, I, I live, you know, I lived around Bayswater and my, my store was Huntingdale. So it's, you know. 30, mm. 30 or so minutes away. So didn't get that, but I was kind of jealous of my friends at the, at the time because they're like, I work at Bunnings or blah, blah, and I'm yeah. getting paid and this and that, and they're buying this, they're buying that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm not getting paid. But, you know, retrospectively, you know, I think it's, it's shaped who I am and I'm very grateful that, you know, my parents, you know, had a hard upbringing yeah. to give me opportunities to where I was uh, and where I am today. So no – um. It wasn't, but one time before leavers, um, uh, we were buying stuff in gear. And I was like, look, I've got an IJ store. How about we go down and get a discount? My dad can hook us up. And that was really cool. So that was the first time uh, my all my all me and three, four friends came down to my store. I showed them around, bought gear and had lunch there. Um, that was the first time I was, I was probably more, I was probably proud of, you know, who I was and what my family what did for a profession. 
Amazing, amazing. And your dad was like, yep, yeah, cool, you can have a discount for your friends. He wasn't uh, strict on anything. No, he, he was more than happy. He's like, oh, yeah, your friends come down. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shout them lunch, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, we, you know, we had a roast chicken and chips and this and that. And it was just cool sitting in the back dock, you know, what I did on a Sunday. It was just cool, you know, kicking back with my friends going, you know, this is, guys, this is this is my world. Um, That's awesome. Which I've, you know, I was, I was never, I was a bit shy to to share my story and, and what my parents went through and what my family went through. But, you know, that was probably... Now thinking about a bit of a glimpse of, you know, being proud of who I was. And now you have a 30 under 30. Uh, yeah, recently uh, got awarded a Business News 40 under 40 award. 40 which under is, 40, um, my bad. Yeah, it's still pretty crazy to think about. Um, yeah, I got awarded it two, uh, two months ago and it's, yeah, all the, you know, acknowledgements and, um, and, and all the support over the last two, two months. So wherever I go, um, friends, family and and all these connections. Um, it's been incredible. Um, yeah, never thought I'd get anywhere near winning an award like that. It's pretty surreal to be honest, you know, not too long ago, you know, graduated from uni, no clue what I wanted in the world, social anxiety and shy. And, um, yeah. you know, what I can say is, you know, if you be comfortable being uncomfortable and you give things a go, uh, and be receptive opportunities, you have no idea where it'll get you. So, yeah, it's a bit of a surreal feeling and, um, and I'm very fortunate to be, you know, you know, my success to winning an award like that, you know, didn't come on my own fruition. You know, I had a lot of help along the way and, you know, my success is everyone's success and, you know, I'm a product of my environment and I'm very thankful to have good friends and, you know, a good network to get me to where I, where I was and, um, yeah, special night. So now now that you're uh, – how old are you now for the audience? Uh, so I just – uh, 31. So, 31. you know, I said to myself, funny with the 40 under 40 awards, I applied last year and got really close. And I said to myself, I had 10 years to get this right. Yeah. Uh, it only took me two. So, um, yeah, <laughs> awesome. yeah. Like one less thing to, to tick off the bucket list, which was really cool. That's so, yeah. cool. That's cool. Um, so now that you're, uh, at the, at the, you're about to take it over. What's your plan to go when your dad goes, right, I'm retiring. Let's do this. What's the what's the plan? What's what what what's your scope on things? It's a really good question. So if you asked me that, you know, five or so years ago when I was in the family business and probably a bit more naive and inexperienced, you know, my mentality back then was I wanted more stores because I thought more is better. But comes uh with a bit more experience comes a bit more wisdom and you know, four stores, you know, I love it and wouldn't change anything for the world for it. But you know, four stores is plenty. It's uh <laughs> comes with its uh, stresses and strains and, um, you know, there's a lot of joys in running your own business as, as you would know. Uh, but, you know, we've got, I've got four locations or, and four or five places to be at once sometimes. It's, it, it can be very challenging. Well, let's go through them. Let's go through them. So if you, where, where are all four yeah, locations? Yeah, so we, um, so we got four stores. So we got, uh, the one in Midlands. Yep. Uh, the one, the big one in High Wycombe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Huntingdale IJ, which we've owned for over 25 years. So wow. I've known that store since I was about that tall. Yeah. And um, Byford, uh, it's called Lakeside Fresh in Byford. Cool. And uh, I've owned that for ooh, four and a half years now. And what considers it to be a big IGA? I think people consider big IGAs by the, by the floor space. Yeah. So a lot, to be honest, a lot of the IJ stores are, you know, medium to small. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the better ones or the easier ones to run. Yeah. Um, I mean, of course. Yeah. Smaller. Bigger stores is more problems, yeah. more staff, Smaller more this, more that. Smaller surface area, less to clean. And Yeah, more running around, this, yeah. that. Um, yeah, so going going back to your question, yeah, four stores is plenty. Um, you know, I, I've been offered and have had a look at other sites and all these things, and I'm not going to say no to it. But, yeah, for me, it's like, you know, what's my, what's my legacy and what's my path? And, yeah. you know, I'm very content in the supermarket space and yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what it, what it is. Um, you know, winning a 40 under 40 award will help. Yeah. You know, I think that will help me think about other things. Um, but yeah, I just want to pursue some other careers and, or, or a passion outside of the supermarket space where that's consulting or, you know, do a lot of volunteering outside of, um, the business and, you know, that aligns with the, the ethos of giving back. Mm. So, you know, exploring that space a bit more is probably where I'm looking at the, at the moment. What about um, – oh, and, and on the on the topic of uh, the different IGAs, which, which which was the one that I visited? Oh, so you visited Midland. So, Midland. Um, Midland. Yeah. That's a huge store. Like, yeah, that's, that's considered big. That was – I uh, felt like 
a Woolworths sort of size, which is insane because I grew up in Padbury mm. and I had the Padbury IGA, formerly Juicens, and it was super tiny. And I was like, all right, that's IGA's brand, super tiny stores. And then when I lived in Kalgoorlie, there was a super IGA and that was a lot bigger. Yeah. And that was uh, probably far out four times the size. And just looking back now, you could consider that almost Woolworths size mm. too. Um, but yeah, this one was huge. It's crazy. It had a whole section of everything. <laughs> but um, with all these, all this running around and your ambitions and you know volunteering and things, how much like how do you allocate your time? How do you not burn out? Yeah, really good question. I'm very look. First off, I'm very fortunate to work for myself, mm. um, and but it come it comes with the territory. Look, I know I got to put in the hard yards, whatever it takes, and that. But you know, I get the flexibility to um, mission mash. You know, all the things I do. So you know, one minute I'm doing some volunteering stuff during the day, or you know, if that means I have to work at night and do work on a few things, I do. Yeah. I, <laughs> Really good question. Look, I I, I, re I really enjoy what I'm doing and that's the first thing. Um, whatever you're doing in life, just make sure you're having fun and enjoying it. And, you know, if you're not, then it's not worth your time. So I, I'm happy to put the extra time in, whether it's in my, you know, IJ or professional career or, you know, whether it's volunteering. Mm -hmm. um, but I also make sure I have time for a bit of time for personal life as well yeah. um, and not to get burnt out. So make, make sure, you know, I, I you know, do things like mindfulness techniques or, you know, probably in the last two years um, with everything, you know, I've been, you know, very mindful more of my mental health and physical well-being. So, you know, for me, I get a massage once a month and it's nice. a good way to unwind and um, a good way to de-stress uh, and to allow me to, to live my fast-paced life. I love that. And where, where you're going to like in terms of your day-to-day, Describe to me your average day to day. Yeah, really good. So my day to day, it kind of varies, but it, it looks something on the lines of wake up in the morning, obviously have breakfast. Uh, and that's one thing I don't skip. I, 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 I skip lunch more often than not, but I make sure I have breakfast. And during that time, I check up on emails and I have a bit of a feel about, you know, what I have to do or achieve during the day. Um, generally, my to-do list is normally been dictated by what happens in the stores or the issues or things that arise. Yeah. And, you know, I try to visit my stores probably about twice a week, each of them twice a week because I, as my role as the group operations and marketing manager, you know, I like to keep my finger on the pulse. I need to know exactly what's happening at the stores, getting feedback from other customers, suppliers or my store managers or, or employees and get a feel about a sense of where the business is going and where I can you know, add some advice or some some of my consulting. So that's kind of how it goes. And yeah, I try to minimize travel time as much as I can because, you know, that's a lot of dead time. But I listen to your podcast along the yeah. way, which is always good. So plug to good plug. the Sev show. Yeah. That's it. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of a, mi a mix between, you know, visiting the stores and doing some office work. I mean, we do have a, uh, a, a head office, but um, I, I, I'm not one for a lot of um, standing behind a desk and doing emails. I like to be connecting with people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can see that's a lot of where a lot of my value is added. So yeah. So pretty much it's visiting stores, checking emails and, and, and looking at a few things and doing TikToks, I guess, that's and it. social media. So being, being the marketing manager, that's part of the role. Um, and when I first met you, you already had a bit of a, a following, a small following compared to what oh, it very, is now. Very, I wouldn't, I'll, I'll, I'm not sure if I'd call, oh, geez, I think I probably had what less than a thousand followers on TikTok to be yeah. honest. So, and yeah. and uh, and then you brought me on. Uh, this was February, and uh, went through ran through a workshop, and then we did the in person practical side of things, and uh, we posted some of them, and some of them did really well. And then you took on the advice on um, doing more and getting the locals involved. How has that progressed uh, in the last five months since we did it? It's been an amazing journey. Look to be to be honest with with TikTok, I can I can say it's probably been one of the hardest things I've ever done. I decided to give it a go because I saw you know a bit of a market space, you know, to be able to give things a go, to learn a lot of things, but also to share our story and be on a different platform, which 
to be honest, other supermarkets and even in the IJ space, people weren't doing. So that's why I reached out to you. I, I saw you a lot on TikTok. It's like, oh, look, he seems to know what he's doing. Excuse me. Yeah. Done a bit of consulting. All right, I'm going to reach out to him. Hopefully he'll teach me a few things. And I think our content has evolved, just like TikTok or a lot of social media platforms evolve. I think a lot of mine were a lot of uh, memes and trends. Um, and, you know, with your consulting, a lot of it's, it's our content has evolved to be, you know, more interview style, um, you know, stuff that we can repeat, stuff that adds a lot of value to um, the audience. And, um, yeah, it's been really incredible. I think, what are we now? We're over 55,000 <sighs> followers. Um, Crazy. It's, it's literally exploded. I think we've had oh, 3 million views on TikTok, which, you know, if you asked me that 12, 18 months ago, I would have laughed at you. Um, you know, it's, and, you know, through your advice, you know, I've never thought I'd be a video editor at all. <laughs> um, but, yeah, and I really enjoy it. That's um, awesome. You know, it helps you storytell and you, and you get a, a you, you, you know, you get a bit of a feel about, you know, when you get the video, you know where to chop and change and add some flair to the whole thing. So it's been really incredible, the whole experience. And yeah, I, I'm, I've got a nickname as the IJ guy on TikTok. That's awesome. Which is really um, weird and never in a million years I thought that was possible. But, you know, whether I'm at, um, at my stores or whether I'm presenting a check or visiting um, the local schools, I, I get mentioned, um, hey, I you know, follow you on TikTok, this and that. So it's been really incredible and it's been a, a point of difference for our business uh, in the space. Amazing. And that's still the first six months, the first 50,000 followers. I remember when I hit 50,000, I had um, a couple of people. I went down south with my wife, right? Mm. And we went down there and we were having a feed at a restaurant and these three boys came up and say, can we take a photo? And I'm like, this is like, I've had a few of those by then, but like not, not, uh, there were probably about three or four times randomly. But then this time it was like in another place, even if it was the same States. And then I was, you know, having lunch and then people came up to us and they, they were nice and they were respectful. And yeah, the, the lads came in and, um, I've got to find the photo. It was classic. And then the parents like, oh, thank you so much. I'm like, wow, you know, 50,000 followers and, you know, that's cool. And now uh, literally, yeah, 100 times the amount, yeah. um, which is crazy. Or not not 100 times. 1.6 million now and every five minutes I'm walking down somewhere someone wants to have a chat. I, I, I've watched this YouTube video uh, recently of Mr. Beast. Um, I love Mr. Beast. Yeah. So he had an interview with these guys two years ago and uh, in his newly um, built um, place, like his ranch or whatever, it's got like thousands of hectares or acres or whatever mm. you call it and this is like his own studio space where he creates different projects. And he had 40 million followers at the time on YouTube. That's a huge. Mm. And I remember watching that and I felt like it was two weeks ago and I was like, <laughs> far out, this guy's killing it. And then they did the same interview, the same play, same people, and he has 160 million subs. Um, you know, he did that Squid Game video and he did some more recent ones where he's restoring eyesight and people's hearing. That's crazy. So he's giving back to the community. I feel like there's not enough of that in Australia. And I feel like what mm. you're doing with IGA will become like this huge success story and this uh, thing that people talk about for years. And you're only at 50,000. I can't wait to do the same interview 12 months from now going, holy shit, look at you now, right? But that's all about consistency. When I, when I talked to you in February, I was like, you need to be consistent and mm. you have been consistent. There's videos that didn't work, but then there's videos that did went absolutely <laughs> skyrocketing. Yeah. And then you hone in on that and then you double down on that style and then you do more of those and then away you go. I have so many more ideas. If I live next door or down the road, I'd be there making content myself. Um, but, but going yeah, back. This is not a plug, uh, but so I'll, I'll tell about the time that you came to our store. Yes. I think you were at the store for an hour maybe mm -hmm. and I can't believe how many ideas you came up with at the top of your head. I've never thought about those ideas, but it opened to the realm of opportunities and possibilities of what a video looks like in a supermarket. Mm. We probably shot 10, 15 videos and some of it was, I think, you know, people to this day, people say, 
oh, you know, that video where you went down the aisle, this and that, or weighing the stuff, that was amazing. Um, yeah, no, no, I think the, the idea generation was very left field, but, you know, create a lot of interest in our business. That's it. That's it. I'm excited. I'm excited. And the most <laughs> importantly, you get the kids involved because what I noticed about my channel is the kids want to be involved. Oh, yeah. Because it creates a sense of belonging, sense of community, and that's what you got to do with any brand. If you have that, you will succeed. You do that long enough, you will succeed no matter what. It's what Mr. Beast does. He yeah, gets, 100%. He's he, been one of my biggest inspirations mm. last 12 months about how he storytells and how he connects with the next generation. You know, I, I say a lot of people, especially the older generation, they don't know who Mr. Beast is. No. They call him Mr. Muscle or whatever the case. <laughs> but, yeah, I think he's done a really good job about storytelling, you know, being a, a social media influencer, doing some great work in the community and being a um, you know business person that That's inspires it. the next generation to to hustle, give back and everything. That's it. And we're, we're starting that here. And I – I like that, yeah. I want to run the flag in my niche, in my area for Australia. Like I don't see anyone here, not nobody. There's influencers and there's creators, but they're not like, they're not going altruistic. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. And like, I see a couple of people that do that classic, uh, Hey, do you have a dollar? And then when they give them a dollar, they give them like a thousand dollars. It's like the guy, there's one guy that, that is the OG for doing this. Uh, his name's MD or something. Mm. He, he does it the best and he was the OG and I'm like, all right, that's his thing. And I'm, Glad, I'm happy that other people are following mm. those footsteps, but it's just like do something unique, do Genuine, something yeah. new, do something, you know. Mm. So uh, for me it's like uh, like doing an interview with a kid and then them showing all their friends that they got to chat with me or they, they're, oh, it went viral, oh, I'm now famous, you know. Like fame isn't everything. Like what is fame, right? For me it's what did you learn from that person? What is the value that they've given you? Um, apart from giving you a fish for a day, like thousand bucks, great. But what have, what can you give me that's lifelong, that is life changing, mm. not just a life experience, a one off experience? Because I'll give you tickets to the grand final, cool, amazing. Uh, everyone loves it for a day. You've done it, it's a memory. But what is something lifelong that you can give someone? Mr. Beast is doing it. Mm. The, 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 the literally giving eyesight back to them, restoring eyesight, restoring hearing. And that's this philanthropic stuff that I love about his side of it. He's got that whole philanthropic channel. That's the sort of shit. Yeah, that I, love I love it. Yeah. You know, but he started from the bottom where he was doing random things, counting up to 100,000. Mm live streaming and saying Mr. Beast a hundred times, hundred thousand times, you know, all them things. He was testing for years. But for you to do what you've done in five, six months, you're still in the testing phase according to, you know, someone like him. Imagine five years of this sort of consistency of where you'll be. I, mate, the, I've been told that ECU um, – marketing students, one of the units they do in social media, they use me as a case study at university. <laughs> That's so cool. And I'm like, cool. Uh, I, don't, I don't even care that they didn't ask me or anything. I just <laughs> really? think that's really cool. You know, I'm like, that's, that's – Look, know. for what it's worth, Sev, you know, a lot of your ideas for interviewing and stuff, you know, I've, I've replicated into, you know, the videos that oh, we're mate, doing. I see them and I'm like, yes, this is it. And, and it's it like – and, you know, um, you know – when when we first caught up and you showed me your wireless microphone, I, I said I said to you, Sev, I'm gonna go buy that microphone. <laughs> yes. So I literally went down to Wanderlust or um, Camera uh, Electronics. Ca- ca- Camera Electronics. Good plug. Shout out to Camera Electronics Great in the plug. city. Whereabouts on Murray Street? Murray Street. Shout out to them. Great plug. And um, the guy had no idea where it was. He's like looking on the. On, <laughs> Don't say that. I was like, hey, I'm looking up. for this wireless microphone. <laughs> um, the one that Sev has. This is what it looks like, I'm pretty sure. And <laughs> he took like 10, 15 minutes, the poor guy. He's like, it's in the system, but I don't know where it is. And it, like, it was not in the in the DGI. Place that was an intern, else. by the way. That was a that was first um, day on the job, by the way. But yeah, it is one of the it the, the is so easy to use. It's value for money. Yep. And um, yeah, like you said, I, c- I can relate to you know my audience. Um, a couple of weeks ago, went to my Byford store two thirty in the afternoon yes. on a Friday. I'm just walking to the store. I've got I've like got plenty of work to do. I'm just going to go to the office. Walk in. There's six high school kids or primary school kids, and they're yelling and screaming my name. I'm like, oh my goodness, have I done something wrong? I'm like, what? What's the occasion? Like. Matt, 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 it's you. We haven't seen you for a while. How are you? Do you remember me? I was part of your last TikTok video, this and that. Like, like, where have you been? 
and um, can we p- be part of your next TikTok? I'm like, oh. yeah, sure, okay. And like they're, like they're so nervous but excited and this this energy, like you said, you want to capitalize on it. Yeah. And then I was like, do you have any ideas? And they're not quite sure. I said, look, how are the easiest ways? I'm just going to interview you all yes. about the store. Yes. And like you can let people know about your store, your favorite things. And like yeah. they're like they're like about they're like dying to like get it started. And um, like you said, it you know it's good for the business, but it's good for them. They you know they get ownership of saying yeah. this is me, this is my local IJ, this is Matt. I know Matt. This is that, and it's like that engagement. It's like I don't know if I could do anything else that that would get that same excitement yeah. or engagement in the store. But um, it's created a point of difference, and you know I'm very thankful to. The audience, so shout out to the Bifer crew. The biggest difference in that is you are the employee within the store. You are the, you know, the owner operator mm. as well. And you are able to put yourself in front of the camera. That is one of the big pillars that I tell every brand that wants me to work with them. Have a mascot, have an ambassador. If you can have that person who's already deep inside the business itself, you are shortcutting like massive, massive shortcuts because you already know the ins and outs of the business. You don't have to email someone. Is this right? Is this right? You already know. And then you put yourself in front of the camera. I'm not asking you to go research something. You already know it off the top of your head. It makes it so much easier. We don't have to create a script to tell an ambassador or an influencer to tell them what you already know. You could have done it yourself. And someone real like that, is so rare to find to be able to do that for their brand. You nailed it. You yeah, nailed it, it. It comes with experience. So, you know, eight years ago, you know, I studied a commerce degree, no idea about marketing, got in the family business. And it was just, to be honest, it was just by necessity that they're like, we kind of need bec- becoming the community liaison. I became the face of the business and I learned to be comfortable with it. I was like, because before I wasn't one for, you know, you know, taking photos of myself or this or that, mm. or hi, it's Matt from blah, 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 yeah. blah. So I got comfortable with, you know, taking photos and being the face of our business. And when it came to TikTok, you know, that was a different kettle of fish because, you know, I've never really videoed myself or recorded myself and I had some anxiety and some doubts about it. But, you know, it's the same thing. I decided to give it a go because if I didn't do it, you know, who else in the business or who <laughs> was going to put their hand up and, you know, staff can, and employees can be very gun shy. But if you get involved and get motivated and energetic about it, you know, they will reciprocate. So... Yeah, for, for me, it was, you know, and any advice to other business owners, entrepreneurs is put yourself in front of the camera. Um, you're I'm a unique so. individual. You're not going to get right along the way, but you're going to learn very quickly what works and doesn't work. And, um, yeah, people can associate you part of, as part of the brand of your business, 100%. And if you're authentic about it and you're not just, you know, doing it for the the sales or the more customers, you're doing it authentic. People can see that. Yeah. And they want to be involved, like those kids. Yeah, and they're like, they, they're like, and a lot of feedback I get from customers, like, it sounds like you're having so much fun. The, yeah. the employees are having so much fun, and the kids are having so much fun. And it's like tick, tick, tick. It's like, what more can you ask? Yeah, and you can make that content over and over and over. Yeah, again. for sure. Like, I'm excited to book a day to go to each one of your four stores and create content for myself, but plug Fam IGA. And know that people got want to go there. Go, oh, Sev went there. Let's go there just in case he's there. Joondalup, Lakeside Joondalup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone comments on almost every video now. Sev, when are you going to Lakeside next? Yeah, right. And I'm telling Lakeside, I'm like, Lakeside, you should look at this. You know, collab. I do it. I do it anyway. And I have had a few collaborations with them, but I was pushing them before going. Can we do something a little bit more frequently, you know, like from a business perspective? Mm. Because it was in the best interest of everybody. It was a win, win, win. The the I got business, they got exposure, quality exposure, and they had people coming into the shops because I was there. And, you know, apart from a couple of collaborations, I think they've slept on it. Mm. And, you know, and that's something else that I reckon brands need to do is identify that and capitalize on it. I don't think there's enough capitalization on those sort of moments. When you find something that works, you need to double down on it. Yeah, 100%. And milk the shit out of it <laughs> yeah, yeah, while yeah. still experimenting with other things. So like with with, uh, with my one of my most viral videos ever is – was that an IGA? Was that the king? It was the shelf, yeah. It was the yeah, shelf thing. Yeah. And that's a series I can do over and over and over again until the cows come home. And like I I actually still get nervous about doing really? that specific 
video because we're filming someone secretly. It's in a public place and that. <laughs> And then we're tr we, we don't want to piss anyone off. We don't want to disrupt their day, but we just want to have a laugh. And the ones that I've posted, all of them enjoyed themselves. They, were, they, had, a, they had a laugh and they were like, oh, my God, this is hilarious. And then that obviously um, went down into the views and mm. people loved it and stuff. But there's so many video attempts from that. That yeah, have right. been unseen that people have <laughs> completely rejected me, <laughs> and that's fine. That was that's content, hundred percent. But right. they they just they just like weird. They, they get weird about things, and and that and that well, that's what makes me nervous. But going to somewhere in in a store like yours, where I know that your staff will, would have get gotten a heads up, going, "Hey, Seb's coming in to film today." Mm. Um, just whatever. It's the same with Lakeside. Security guards leave me alone because I call in i'm like hey guys i'm filming today chill and they're like yeah no worries one of the security guards doesn't get the memo <laughs> she, oh. they come up to me and they go what are you doing <laughs> and i'm like ring this person and ask them and i'll have the clearance and then they get them on yeah. the radio call my bluff and then like oh shit you're actually legit i'm like yeah cool so um that's always funny but going to the iga now um again i wish it was closer but i need to make a day of it and like a saturday i reckon that'd be a busy oh, yeah, day yeah. hey you're down. You're and just to do, come. And just do all of the <laughs> – get me from the bottom shelf and stuff. Oh, it would be <laughs> crazy. So, um, all right, going forward now into your 30s, where do you see yourself in alignment with your um, – with the fam group when you're – let's start with 35 and then 40. I really thought of that far ahead in, in goals and stuff. Look, I've just been very lucky in the last, let's say, five or so years in my life that yeah. I was just – Receptive to opportunities, I gave it a go, and then one door opened another. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure with um, the next five or ten years in my life, but yeah, ha happy in the IJ space. But you know, is there something I can do, you know, with myself? And, and you know, is there a business in there to consult people about how a small business works, or how social media works, or um, you know, is there a, is there a, a space for me to you know consult in the volunteering mm -hmm. non profit sector? You know that's 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 where I'm I'm thinking about, um, and and dip my toes in the water. Okay. So yeah, look, I think for me it's really important to have a balance in life because you know do, does ten IJ stores make me happy? Does twenty it was like, well, not really. It just adds more stress. There's more phone calls. You got to mm. hire more staff, and what happens? This happens. That happens, and mm. it's on those things. Just like, well, I'm very content and blessed in life um, to you know have a living but also pursue the other passions in my life as well. So the main thing for me is, yeah, to, you know, balance it all, have a personal life, um, travel a bit more probably is the way to go. I love I that. Think, I think ever since the flu, it's, yeah, I've been very fortunate enough to do a bit more traveling and I just realized, you know, there's more of the world to see and connect with, um, with, with traveling. I love that. I love that travel. God, I travel. Where's your like dream place you've always wanted to visit? Good question. Uh, they're all good questions. Yeah. I, I haven't gone to Europe. Yep. That's one thing. And I've I've spent a week in Japan. Oh. And that was on a like a bus tour. So I only got to see, you know, each city like a day. So I didn't get myself really immersed in. So probably Europe and Japan, probably two places that probably come to mind. I love that. I love that. And do you have any other hobbies apart from um, video games? Yeah. So apart from video games, you know, I, I – Spend a lot of time in volunteering. So I'm yep. involved in a lot of volunteering organizations. So, you know, I'm on a school board at the Honeydale Primary School, uh, the Bendigo Bank uh, branch in Byford. I'm a board director. And on top of that, you know, I've been involved with, with Rotary uh, for the last, oh, geez, how long has it been now? Six years. Mm -hmm. And it's probably been the best thing I've done in my life. It's got me to where I was to, you know, someone who just played video games didn't get out of his comfort zone to where I am now. Mm. And had it not been for volunteering and doing rotary and giving back, I hundred percent wouldn't have, wouldn't have won a 40 under 40 award. Haven't, wouldn't have got anywhere near it. So yeah. So pretty heavily involved in rotary um, and part of my rotary club in Elizabeth key. Love that charity helps charity helps immensely. You do it from the heart and that will come back full circle in in a better way for you the karma is real yeah it, it, it's really funny so it, because of all the community work i was doing in my ij i asked a local politician i was like how do we become more like you because you seem you have good energy and buzz 
And he's like, well, join Rotary, do some volunteering. And, you know, growing up, you know, Asian parents and stuff, we, we weren't accustomed to that. So I was like, oh, look, I like this type of thing. I'm going to give it a crack. And yeah, it opened a world of opportunities. You know, I signed up to volunteer just to give back. But, you know, what I got back, you know, was a hundredfold in return. And some of the things I got, like, you know, I, I got a mentor out of it, professional development, personal development, leadership opportunities, and met an amazing group of people and friends and even done business deals with people I've met through my volunteering journey. So honestly, um, best thing I've done, ever done in my life so far and, you know, highly encourage people to give back. And and that's why, you know, I I have a huge, you know, amount of respect uh, of someone like Mr. Bees because, you know, yeah. yes, he, he mixes business, but he has philanthropy and yeah. inspires the next generation to give back. And I think that's really important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So given the advice or given your experience and observations <clears> over <throat> the last 31 years now, um, you're speaking to someone who is still at school and who's uncertain of what they're going to do. Mm. Um, but they're looking at maybe running a business or studying at uni. What would be your most important one piece of advice be? Yeah. A couple of things I would say is, well, one thing I'd say is it's okay not to have things figured out. And I think we put too much pressure on the younger generation, you know, especially the way things are designed when you're seven to 18, you know, what, what university degree you want to study for the next three, four years to get in your professional career. And, you know, I, I didn't have it figured out probably until my mid twenties, to be honest. So, you know, don't be stressed out about not, not knowing what you want to do. Like it's completely fine. And for me is really quite simple. It's just to give things a go. Like just, just back yourself, whatever it is. If you want to do this, go for it. If you want to do X, Y, Z, just honestly go for it. Um, give things a go and be comfortable being uncomfortable. Love that. And, and I think that's where I, I had a lot of my learnings. You know, I never thought I'd, you know, I, I got social anxiety at university because I completely fluffed a presentation. And it got to the point back 10 years ago when I first joined the gym and I was skinnier than what I am now. When I first joined the gym, it took me 40 minutes to get out of the car and open the door to and talk to someone. Like seriously, I I had so much anxiety in my head. I, I had many a thought to leave, dr- turn on the car and just drive back home. Uh, and then something clicked in my head going, Matt, you need to give this a go because you're going to live a life paralyzed in fear and you don't know what you're missing out on. You need to just see what happens. If you think people are going to laugh at you or this or that, so be it. But you need to to get out of this because, yeah, you're going to live a life in fear and who knows what it's going to be. So, I love yeah. that. I love that. We're going we're gonna to introduce a new section, a new Ooh. segment into the uh, podcast. It's called uh, the Red Mike Firing Squad. Might change the name of that later. I've, I've, I've seen this <laughs> on, up, in your TikToks and came stuff. Came up with that. So you hold that. Okay. Keep keep your mouth still relatively close to that yep. mic because that's the actual yep. mic. So I'm just going to give you quick questions. Yep. Give me quick answers. Sure. Don't explain. Don't yep. expand. Quick fire. Just go Got for it. it. Quick fire. All right. Yep. All right. Uh, your favorite IGA store that you have? Byford. Lakeside Fresh. Why? I own it and I built it from the ground. Hey. Um, favorite thing to uh, stock at IGA? At the moment, it's the American products. Okay. Why is that? Uh, Cause all the, all the, all the kids and all the high school students love it. And that's how I get my following and it's a niche as well. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, least favorite thing to stock at IGA. Anything heavy and bulky. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, how do I get a job at IGA? Really quite simple. Um, have a resume, have a cover letter, come into the store and, and drop it off and, and have a, a conversation with someone saying, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'd like to drop on my resume. Would that be okay? Perfect, perfect, perfect. And uh, final question, um, if you could eat one thing at IGA, from your IGA for the rest of your life, what would it be? Or stumped him. I love pizza, so I'll probably have to go with pizza. Expansion question. What is on your pizza for the rest of time? I kind of like an Italian pizza, to be honest. Or I, I like a classic pepperoni pizza, it's just straight up pepperoni. Straight up pepperoni. Yeah. Great. Cool. Love a Domino's pepperoni pizza if we're going down <laughs> that path. Crazy, crazy. All right. Easy. Red mic question done. Well done. There cool. it is. So that'll be rapid a segment. Fire. Oh, rapid fire completed. Um, well, 
Matt, thank you so much for uh, all the uh, stories that you've shared and your uh, journey you. so far. Definitely a part one, um, part two in the mix uh, 12 months from now. Can't wait to see what that uh, IGA uh, fam group uh, number gets up to. <laughs> we'll and, see. And uh, I cannot wait for you to just get flown around the country and show other IGAs how it's done. Um, I'll come with you, obviously. Um, for sure. Let's um, – <laughs> One final sign off. Um, give your give your fam group a plug. Yeah, just in the camp. So you can follow us on our social. Oh, here. Yep. You can follow us on our socials at fam group IGA uh, on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram or TikTok, it's at MaddieFam92. Yeah, 92. Come say hi to me if you see me around. <laughs> love it, love it. Get a photo. And uh, if you want to get a photo, then he has to give you an interview. That's the catch. You know, that's the trade-off. Um, as for myself, uh, huge shout-out to Bright Tank Brewery, as always, for sponsoring, major sponsor of the podcast. Um, they're located in East Perth and they've got a restaurant there which has some of the most insane steak you'll have in Perth. Um, and they've got a whole range of uh, beers. They've got the Double Chalk Face Killer that has just been released. The uh, the wonderful, wonderful, frothy, golden liquid. Get it in ya. Um, obviously, responsible drinking, uh, over 18 and all that. Don't do it if you're pregnant. And that's all the formalities. Again, Matt, thanks for coming in. No worries. My pleasure. As always, guys, good thanks. <laughs>